we have finally made it to the one more day of Texas A&M week. It's your boy, Wrecking the Building, joined by the guy Turn. Listen, y'all, man, a lot has happened in two days. From, from Wednesday to today, a lot has happened. A lot of good news for the Vols and a lot of good news for the fans attending this game on Saturday. Gary Danielson has left us with some challenge or really he's left us with an assignment because he is just somewhere begging Nick Saban to give him his something. You know, you, you know where I'm at. It's unbelievable. But anyways... Big show today, man. It's the one more day. You know, we got score predictions, final score predictions uh, for the Texas A&M and Tennessee game tomorrow. Obviously, we have keys to victory. And then who do we need to see be the playmakers of the game offensively and defensively for the Vols to carry out this victory? Got a lot of things to dive into. So let's get to it, man. Welcome to Straight Up Tennessee and welcome to the one more day episode. Let's get it. Yo, 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 what's good, everybody? Welcome to Straight Up Tennessee today on this Friday morning, man. I am more than excited to say Friday morning. This has felt like the longest week without Tennessee football, without anything. But tomorrow, we will rejoice once again. Joined by my guy, Turn, man. Thank you guys who's rocking with us right now on YouTube. Like, comment, subscribe. Hit the bell notification right now, man, so you never miss an episode everybody listening on apple and spotify man we thank you man thank you so much for the support we feel it we see it we are almost over five thousand plays total unbelievable man continue to write this thing uh continue to rate us five stars and continue to share it man share it to the people you love most and people who will love this content as well man tennessee basketball last night had their market square madness which is a great event for the family great event to meet the new players see this new team and uh, just have a good night. Looked like a great night. I was obviously unable to make it. Uh, same turn, didn't make it as well. But, man, seen a lot of pictures, videos from the night. Looked absolutely amazing. Tennessee is getting ready for their exhibition game against Michigan State up in East Lansing uh, on October 29th. Rick Barnes, you know what You know what this team's going to be. They're, they're going to be – they're going to fight defensively. Uh, they're, they're, they're going to claw – uh, they're going to scrap. And then the biggest thing is this year, it looks as if we've added what we've missed out on the last few years, which is a lot of shooters. DK, uh, Jordan Ganey, you get Vescovy back. Vescovy back. Vescovy back. Man, I didn't know how to connect his name to back. Anyways, you get Santi back. Uh, Josiah James has proven that he can knock down the three ball as well. Um, Freddie DeLon, DJ Jefferson. This team should be light years better than we've been uh, over the last two seasons uh, getting to the tournament and struggling there. But y'all know what it is, man. It's A&M week. It's a massive week. And there are a few things that have rolled out <laughs> since we've last talked on Wednesday. First being Josh Heupel had his press conference on Thursday. Great, great update on Danico Slaughter and Dante Thornton Jr. It looks as if both of them are going to be ready to roll. He obviously throws in the caveat of, well, you know, Friday we do our last walkthrough practice and all of these things. But all signs point to Danico Slaughter and Dante Thornton being back on the field with the volunteers uh, tomorrow. And this is this is big. This is big for Tennessee. Because I think that with those two coming back at full strength after the bye week, 
you, you're going to get an opportunity to see Danico Slaughter play more than six to 12 snaps, right? I don't feel like Slaughter has got his hand, like the hand hasn't been dealt right for Danico Slaughter. I feel as if he has been banged up really since game two and didn't play at Florida, didn't play at UTSA. You know, just 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 weird. He played a little bit in the South Carolina game. Um, but it's time to see what Danico Slaughter can bring to this defense when healthy. Dante Thornton, we know how much hype was around Dante. We know how much uh, everyone just thought he would come in and be instant. We thought it. And the the progression has just taken a little bit more time. But that's not a bad thing. We've seen the flashes. We've seen the signs. We've seen the things that Dante can bring to this offense. And now with him at a full strength, he, after nursing that hamstring for two weeks, I'm anxious to see how we position him on the football field tomorrow. Um, if, you're, if you're noticing that you're not hearing turn right now, his computer has restarted during the recording. So he is uh, he's just restarting his computer. He'll be with me soon. But um just wanted to let everybody know that who's listening on Apple and Spotify, not rocking with us right now on YouTube. Wanted y'all to know that it is not just me. It is just me right now, but turn will be joining us back here in just a few minutes. Um, but anyways, back on the Dante Thornton hype and the, 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 the possibility of what can be with him. I think that Josh Heupel has now been put in a position to say, Hey, how do you get, your best players, the football. Dante Thornton being one of those guys, how does Tennessee work in different schemes, work in different packages, work in different situations where your best football players are not only on the field at the same time, but they're getting the football? Um, we know what Squirrel White is going to do. Squirrel White is the most consistent receiver out of the group that we have had all year. It's now what does Chaz and Caleb and Dante, Ramel Keaton, man, we're going to talk about Ramel Keaton in the keys to victory later um, in the show. He's kind of disappeared. I don't think it's been purposeful, but he has. And so how do, how does he come alive in this game? But I'm interested to see how we put Dante and what kind of positions we put him in, because I think that that is going to be what drives a little bit of the creativity that can come alive in these next few games. And Saturday is the perfect time for creativity um, and for scheming guys open things that we did all year last year that we haven't seen yet. Um, so I'm very excited about that. The boy turn is back with us now, y'all. Um, so all I'm talking about right now, Turn, is that Josh Heupel had the press conference. Danico Slaughter and Dante Thornton seem to be a go. Talking a little bit about what Dante can bring. The excitement, the hype it early. Everybody was excited. We were excited. And it's not that he hasn't lived up to it. It's that he just wasn't necessarily fully understanding what his role was going to be. And now, with Brew McCoy out, he has an opportunity to come and be alpha. Will he do it? That's what we're based. That's what I'm basically kind of talking about is how are we going to get him the football and oh, how yeah. different schemes, different positions? Wh where can Dante Thornton fit in and start to come alive like we know he can? Yeah, dude. I mean, what I'm most excited about is like if he does play outside. I mean, I know he's I know he's a deep threat. I get you know what I mean? Kind of. It was just a little choppy. All I heard was something, something. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why it's doing that. He don't um, know what's wrong with his Wi-Fi right now. But I know. no, I, I was saying, like, I know I know everybody's excited. Like everybody's like, you know, Dante's a deep threat, like just throwing the ball, he's six five. But I'm more excited, I think, if he plays outside a little bit, see him in the screen game, see him in the open field, what he can do. Yeah. Yeah, he's absolutely. Guys, he's faster than Brew. So, I mean, if he can catch a seam. Could be a, could be a long day. <laughs> yeah. Could be I a mean, good day for him, too. I, I would love to see Dante Thornton get into that five to seven catch radius game. Like, yes. can, can he have five 
can he have seven targets and let's just see what he does with them? You yeah, know, score, yeah. score White's going to get the most targets. It it just it just happens that way every game. Yeah. And I was explaining, I was like, man, nobody's worried about Score White. Nobody's mm-hmm. worried about Score White. He's going to go out there, execute, do things at a high level. But how can we get our best players on the field at the same time and get them in positions to be successful? I think now more than ever is that's what we have to kind of lean on in the receiving and the passing game. 1,000%. 100%. I agree with that. I don't know, man. I think Ramel needs to step up too this week. I mean, I know oh, I sure. said that. I said we're gonna talk about Ramel in keys to victory later on. But yeah. um, Squirrel's, Squirrel's gonna get his. Squirrel's gonna do his. Squirrel's gonna catch the football. Squirrel is sure hands. You know, and I don't know. I'm excited about Caleb Webb too. I mean, I'm, I'm not Very gonna look. Over, I'm Caleb. not gonna look over Caleb Webb. You know, saying Dante's gonna play the whole game because we're gonna see. I think we're gonna see a lot of Caleb Webb as well. I think you get a sprinkle, like a little dash of salt being Chaz Nimrod. Uh, mm-hmm. Because Chaz is so fast. I mean, you saw on the play, of uh, yes, it was UTSA, but he's open. He's open. Think, he gets there. Do you think you think our uh, – because we know Squirrel's going to play the whole game. Yep. And we know, we know Ramel Keaton's going to get a lot of snaps as well. Correct. So you've got Dante Thornton, Caleb Webb, Chaz Nimrod. Do the coaches treat it kind of like they treat running backs in the hot hand? Gets get gets to go. You know what I mean? Like if Dante's in there and he gets like two or three catches and he's feeling himself, it's like, okay, we'll, we'll roll with Dante. Let's roll with Dante for a while. Not saying that Caleb Webb and Chaz Nimrod don't play, but like I'm saying, like you think they roll with the hot hand and then, you know, let's say he does two or three catches and he, get, he gets it going and he gets quiet. Then you put Caleb Webb in, you know, see whatever I can do. I don't know. One of them things I don't know. They play the hot hand, or they just kind of like you think they got different sets. Like I think it all comes down to too. Like we got to think like this offense is not very easy to learn at receiver. I think. I mean, I'm not. I'm not on the team. I don't know. But like this is Dante's first like time learning this offense. Like you know what I mean? Yep. Yeah, and I, I think too. As much as we, and I say we because it's really just you and I, we talk about this a lot. As much as we think Dante could play outside, I just, I don't, like, we don't know how much he's actually going to get to go outside. Josh Heupel mentioned him in that rotation of being on the outside. But he's a slot receiver. Like, every snap he's taken this year has been inside. And so it's hard for me to think, He's just going to now get 20 snaps on the outside. You know you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which he could. I could be completely, like, shocked, and hopefully I am because, man, that would be awesome. Line him and squirrel up on the same side, who going to catch either one of them? Yeah, I mean, and, and too, you got to think about – I mean, I think that's the biggest talk around Tennessee football right now is, like, who's going to take that Bruce spot, and, you know? Like, I think, I think all three of those guys, I think Dante, I think – Chaz Nimrod, I think Caleb Webb, I think they can all catch the ball just as good as Brew, if not better. I think the yeah. I think what we got to find is the one who's going to be aggressive and get some blocks. You know what I mean? How many screen? How many do you start to see a slip screen? Because that will allow the tight ends on the inside to go outside and the receiver comes in. Like, does that change? I don't know. We don't know. I don't know. We've never seen a slip screen in Josh Eibel's offense, but you don't, in see order screen, to get, you don't see many halfback screens either. No, no, no. But in order to get the the blocking and the scheme correct, the way we we were so used to with Brew McCoy out there, Ramel Keaton's a pretty good blocker as well on the outside. Um, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know what they're going to do. I don't either. I don't before we dive into the meat of the show, guys, everybody's – by now, you have heard old Gary Danielson of CBS has once again opened his mouth in a way that was dumb. He gave Tennessee fuel. He gave us exactly what we needed. And this is what Gary Danielson says. He's talking on, the, uh, on a teleconference and just talking about Tennessee. He says, in quote, Tennessee doesn't have to take a back seat to anybody, but... To me, it's just about 
the same as other SEC stadiums. Talking about Neyland Stadium, can I read to you some former players who have played at Tennessee and what they have said about playing at Neyland Stadium? Brady Quinn, who's a host for the Big Ten uh, on the Fox Network, he says, look, I've been to Neyland Stadium. I've played there. That is the loudest place I've ever played. Trevor Knight, he played at Texas A&M when we went to two overtimes down there in Kyle Field. He says the loudest and most intimidating ever was Tennessee. Josh Pate, everybody knows Josh Pate, the late kick. He says it's the loudest environment I've ever witnessed in person. Everybody knows Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield talks about Neyland Stadium. He says when we want to play in Neyland, when we went to play in Neyland, that's a different type of loud. I can't even describe it. It was unbelievable. Ricky Pearsall, Florida receiver. Catch of the year still up for debate, but he says, I just started laughing because of how loud it was. Will Anderson Jr. I don't have to explain who he is. Will Anderson says, someone asked him a question and says, what's the toughest stadium to play in in the SEC? He says, without hesitation, Tennessee. So what did old wrinkled neck, white-haired granddaddy shouldn't be calling games, might stroke out while he called a game, Danielson? What was he thinking? Man. Jason Swain tweets it out. And then at the end of what he, he quoted to Gary Danielson, he said, does everyone understand the assignment? think we understand the assignment and that's to be absolute buck wild Tennessee fans was going to be lit and drunk a little bit already because you know the 330 game everybody not all the way lubricated they're a little bit lubricated but now people gonna get to their gates this game was everybody was kind of chilling you know what I'm saying it was like man it's a big game checker kneeling woo. but now bro everybody getting to the to their garages at seven they not having energy drinks they having Irish cream, cold brews with Bailey's. You hear me? <laughs> they, they having peanut butter whiskey and cold brew. You know what I'm talking about? They having peanut butter whiskey cold brews. <laughs> they not having any food. No food. Sloppy. No food. They going to be sloppy. They going to have, instead of jello shots, they shots, they going to have egg shots. <laughs> the, we finna be in there acting a complete fool because he just made the dumbest comment he could have made heading into Neyland Stadium now. And Gary Danielson hates Tennessee already. He loves Nick Saban. Loves Nick Saban. Slobbering over Nick Saban right now at home. He's probably laying in his bed with his wife thinking about Nick Saban. That's the rug rant for today, okay? But that pissed me off, bro. I can't count. You said something about it the other day. I'm so glad that we're my man's my man <laughs> uh, you're back now i think you're back now go ahead say it i said i'm so glad this game is at home so we so we ain't got to sit there and watch and listen to gary donaldson on tv i couldn't listen to gary Danielson, bro not not for this one now the alabama game i'm a, i'm going to um <laughs> I, I i really want i really wish that like peyton would call the game like he does on monday nights Man, if it, it, you know, you know what I would do if it wouldn't behind. If I didn't have, if we did, like you got it too. If we, if I didn't have YouTube TV, you know what I would do? Listen I would have the, the game. Radio. I would have the game on and have ninety nine one on. <laughs> yep, hundred percent. I'd rather listen to Bob Kessling any day and Tim yeah. Priest. Goodness gracious. Anyways, y'all, we understand the assignment. Checker this thing up and let's beat the piss out of A and M and show Gary Danielson. And let, can I just say this one last thing before we move on? Gary Danielson was also calling the Alabama Tennessee game last year, and he had the nerve to say what he just said. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm amazed by that one. I don't even know why. <sighs> He's up there in the box. He don't hear anything. Yeah, because old men can't can't they my, my ears hurt, baby. Nick, Nick, my ears hurt. <laughs> oh gosh. All right, y'all. I'm done. All right, y'all. Right, man, let's dive in, turns. Keys to victory, man. 
Number one, you and I 100% agree on number one, man. It is win in the trenches. In order for Tennessee to even have a shot, we have to win in the trenches. This is this is this whole entire game, bro, is set up by that. Honestly, bro, that's my one. I told I told you earlier that that is my one. Because I think if you win in the trenches, you win this game. Everything else will take to. care of itself. I mean, Everything else will. You're right. Tennessee, I, I, I've explained it like this to the people in our Discord. We have to be the nastiest team nasty. tomorrow. Like, nasty. I'm not talking like, I, I want jerseys to be ripped. Helmets, white helmets to be maroon. Facts. Like, we got to be nasty. Offensive linemen shouldn't be able to walk off the field. Defensive lineman might lose a finger. No, not at all. You should, like I don't care what you got to do to get that. You got no. to. Am I back? You're back. You're back. Kind of. I don't think so. I don't know. This man Wi Fi on that crazy, y'all. It, it's a, I got like six hundred six hundred MB right now. I don't, I don't understand. Again. Well, I'm back. We're going to keep it going. We're going to keep it going. Number one is winning the trenches. Number two is this. Number two is how a key to victory is connect on 65% of downfield throws. Joe Milton on the year is eight of 30 yeah. on balls 20 or more yards down the field. If you can't do quick math, that's 27%. 27% on 20 or more yards. Now, there have been some drops. There have been some bad throws. And there's just been miscommunications, bad routes, things like that. But that's unexcusable. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's unexcusable to me. 8 of 30 is pretty bad. You ain't going to Let's say we throw the football 12 times, 20 or more yards. If Joe Milton connects on eight of those, that is like 67%. That's where we need to be tomorrow in order to win this football game. He is going to have opportunities, turn. He's going to have a lot of opportunity to throw the football down the field. Can he complete the passes? Can the receivers be on the same, same wavelength? I'm telling you, bro, we're, he has an opportunity to have a 350-type yard game. I agree with that. I agree with that 100. percent And he, we kind of talked about it, man. If it if it comes down to, we kind of talked about it on Wednesday. If if we can't run the football and it comes down to Joe's going to have to beat Texas A&M, he's got. I mean, there's no there's no ifs ands or buts. You've got to complete those passes. They're going to be there. Yeah, and I I, I don't. I don't think it – and this might be a super unpopular opinion, super unpopular. With Joe Milton, I don't think it's as much accuracy as it is timing. Yeah, I agree with that. He holds on to the ball sometimes when half a second earlier, just let it fly. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you ain't got to throw it 70 yards every time. No. Um, it, if – if he can complete the 65% that I'm talking about, it will be a long night, I think, for Texas A&M. And there's multiple reasons why. Okay, they're starting two, Turner, two true sophomores. Two. They got one junior and a graduate transfer. But they're starting two true sophomores who haven't seen a ton of football, man, at, in the defensive back room. Joe's yeah. got an opportunity, bro, to absolutely eat. Who also is a big key to victory is number three. It's Ramel Keaton and Dante Thornton or Dante Thornton. We said this earlier about Ramel. Ramel just kind of disappeared over the last two games. Yeah, man. And it's very uncharacteristic. Ramel came in last year after Cedric Tillman was hurt and just blossomed. 
but it yeah. seems as if he took a step back. I told you this, Turner, at the Virginia game, as I'm sitting there and he drops that deep ball. I told you, I said, bro, we need number 80 back. Because number nine has not been the same since that drop. And yes, we he, do. <laughs> he's important to what can transpire tomorrow. And he's he he was the sure catch, quick five yard hitch, five yard slant. But that has disappeared. That's disappeared. And how how does he play a role tomorrow in a, in a much bigger way than he has? Dante the same. We just talked about Dante a lot. But it's time for Dante to wake up, and it's time for him to just come alive. And I think that tomorrow – is a great opportunity for both of these guys. And we need them, man. They are massive keys to us getting this W. Oh, yes. A hundred percent. I don't know, man. <clears throat> I think we should win. I mean, I, th I think we're going to win. I don't think there's any excuse not to, but I think we got to complete those deep balls. And I think, I don't know, man. Ramel, Ramel and... Uh, Milton have always had something, and it's kind of not—it's not—it's not the same this year as it was last year. You know what I mean? Yeah, one hundred percent. I don't know. I don't know. I think we got so much talent. Like there's so much talent, and we 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 haven't had that game where we just are like, whoa, like because we could have. I mean, we we should have that game. You know what I'm talking about? Like, we've got so much talent on the offensive side of the ball. I mean, Joe Milton might be one of – like, the sky's the limit for Joe Milton. I mean, my gosh. I will say he's going to have to use his legs a little more. <clears throat> I think that's going to be involved as well. I, I do. Mean, I really do. What I mean by legs, I don't, I, don't, I, don't mean, I don't mean 15, 30 yard runs. I mean, like, four or five. Four or five yeah. and get down instead of – Instead of being second and ten, let's let's get second and six. You know what I mean? Second yeah. and five. Yeah. You ain't yeah. gotta have big plays, but just just step up in the pocket and get you get you four or five, three or four, and just slide. If you don't want to get hit, yeah. just slide. Yeah. This kind of leads into it, man. The last key to victory is stay kneeling loud all night long. The crowd has to be locked in the entire night. We, we go up on South Carolina. It didn't matter if we were up one, two, three touchdowns, bro. It was lit the whole time. And I think that it has to be that same way. And we got to force Texas A&M to feel like they just – they they need to feel pitiful. And if they feel it, they'll start to believe it, and then we will just continue to take over and allow the offense and the defense to play um, at a very elite level all night. And so. That's my last, and I think that's the last key to victory, man, is the crowd, man. It, it's it's going to be a factor. It, they have it, it, Jimbo Fisher has not had a signature road win in six years. Yeah, facts. And th that's that that was my point that I was about to bring up. Like Texas AM is not a very good road team. So we go, we get we let's say, let's say we get offense, we score first. Like or, or even better, we're on defense. We get a stop and then march it down the field and score. If Texas, if we get up on Texas A&M, two scores. I, I'm, I'm just saying two, two possession game. They're going, they're going to go to slips because like, oh, here we go. They're going to get in their heads. Here we are. Texas A&M can't play on the road, and we're not going to get any quieter. I promise. Yeah, and I shouldn't say in six years, but really this year and last year they have struggled mightily on the road and haven't had a signature road win. And so can can Tennessee continue that for them? The Neyland home streak it goes back to not, to last year now. We got to keep this up, man. Um turn who needs to be the playmaker of the game defensively first in your opinion. Say it again. You went out. I said, who needs to be the defensive playmaker of the game, in your opinion? James Pierce. Minus Tyler Barron. 
So it's the both of those guys who are on opposite sides. Tyler Barron, he disappeared against South Carolina. James Pierce. And so when Tyler Barron disappeared against South Carolina, it was it it was it was uncharacteristic. And so now with James Pierce, you say James Pierce, I think it's got to be Tyler Barron tomorrow. I'm I mean I'm I'm 100% with that. We got the same position. <laughs> Just different different sides. <laughs> Offensively, who needs to be the playmaker of the game for Tennessee? Cooper Mays. I like it. In my opinion, me, I think Cooper Mays. Go ahead. I, I like it. I, I think for me, it is Ramel Keaton. Um, you, you're going to have opportunities again. Can Ramel just click? It's time, bro. He's a deep threat. He's great in the intermediate game. Um, there, it, it's time for Ramel to wake up, and I think he has to be successful, man, for Tennessee to um, do something special tomorrow and, and catch the and, and not just catch the dub, but secure it and run out of there with it big. Romel Keaton's going to play a huge role in that, man. And um, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm going to have a hot take right here. I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. And this is a long shot. If if we rush for 200-plus against a and I'm frozen. I'm back. Am I back? Uh, you, you're still here, brother. Okay. If, if we rush for 200-plus against a and we make it to the SEC championship. <laughs> no comment. I have no comment on that one. I wish y'all could see my face if you're not listening on YouTube. Um, oh, turn me saying some reckless stuff, y'all. Don't clip this if you're a fan of Georgia, because Georgia fans love our page. So, um, my y'all pray for my friend. <laughs> I think we can get there, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm not close to saying that yet. We gotta let's take care of business these next three, oh. and then you might get a, a ruck that's a little bit more optimistic. Because I'm not in a pessimistic seat yeah. right now at all. Yeah. I'm I'm excited, but. That was a straight up. That was a straight up Tennessee fan comment right there. It was. Don't clip this. Whoever's listening and watching, just don't do that. Just keep that to yourself. Keep it right here on the straight up Tennessee page. We're gonna. What if I, I hope say, you're right. What if I say two fifty, like three hundred plus? That one like it. You still talking reckless? Like we gonna like if we get two fifty on a And M, then we win in the natty. <laughs> At that point, like, more reckless than what I said. That's only fifty yeah. yards more. Two. That's a lot of yards on the number one defensive line in the country. That's why, that's why I said that because if I run a game, can that be be that successful against A and M? Like, bro, like mm. everything else will take care of itself. Don't clip that, y'all. Please keep that right here. I'm ready for the final score predictions. <laughs> final score. Final score predictions, man, for Tennessee and Texas A&M. I'm going to take the reins first turn. I know on Monday um, on the live show, I said 38-24 Tennessee. I am switching that just a little bit. I think that it's going to be a battle, um, but I also think that Tennessee is definitely at least a touchdown favorite. And so I want to switch my score up a little bit. I'm thinking more Tennessee 33 Texas A&M, 27. Okay. Okay. I'm saying 38-28. I like 38-28. I like that, too. 38-28 final. We'll see who's closest tomorrow at 3.30 CBS. I can't wait, man. And y'all know it ain't 3.30 for real. It's like 3.37. CBS be capping when they talk about these kickoff times. It's going to be like 3.37 and a half. They do weird stuff. And if you're watching on TV, just be prepared. There's going to be a TV timeout every five minutes. So y'all remember the Alabama game last year? The game starts at 3.30. We there at 8.15. Dude, it was the like, longest game ever. God almighty. But it was entertaining. 
I don't want this one to be as entertaining. I just want to win. Well, the clock don't stop either. Yes, yes. Either. So 33-27 is Ruck. 38-28 is Turner. Y'all, I can't wait to be back with y'all, man, on Sunday and chop it up about this Tennessee victory. Tennessee and Texas A&M tomorrow, 3.30, CBS. Uh, Gary Danielson, wear your earplugs, old man. Thank you. Uh, Turn, you got anything else, bro, before we wrap up the one more day? No, I'm pretty sure I said I said my reckless comment, so I think I'm <laughs> – I, mean, I'm I had a ruck rant. Hey, we good. We we feeling good today on this Friday, y'all. We can't wait for this game tomorrow. Straight up Tennessee tailgate is not happening tomorrow. We're just taking it easy. Uh, we'll be back in full force come Georgia week. So all the people in the Discord, make sure you stay luck, locked in for dis, uh, for updates on that tailgate, where, when, what to bring, yada, yada, yada. Um, but until then, man, thank y'all for rocking with us today. We'll see you back on Sunday. For my dog, Turn, it's your boy, Ruck, man. Go Vols. Go Big Orange. It's time for Tennessee to handle business and take on a big game. V-O-L, V-F-L, gang, gang, and the boy, Eric Berry. Eric Berry. Yeah. He's going to be getting honored tomorrow. Going to be a great day on Rocky Top. Checker Nealon, let's go beat the Aggies, man. It's straight up Tennessee, baby. We'll see you on Sunday. <laughs>